Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My hair looks insane, but it's okay because it's been a very stressful and long week. Because, like I said in previous videos, I'm back at work and back at school and I'm juggling this at the same time. So I look crazy, but I really don't care. But in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my plant maintenance routine. My apartment is a crazy mess right now and some of my plants are not doing the best at the moment. Mainly because I've been adjusting to everything changing from going to nothing to like everything at once. So I'm just not going to be, I'm not going to hide anything. You guys can see like what they look like in a bad state and yeah like they always perk back up most of them are just like needing some basic care like they need some leaves removed some of my plants don't look the best either um just generally like they're ones that are more difficult in my opinion so you'll see those as well not everything can be perfect <laughs> i still love them i still take care of them it's just finding the time to do it and the motivation to do it after everything throughout the week, honestly. So I'm probably just gonna start in my office here and bring you guys along with me. Again, I apologize for the mess. I'm a college student. Not everything looks great all the time, so <laughs> yeah. But I'm gonna start in my office, then probably move to the bedroom and take you guys into the main room where most of my plants are and then take you guys outside as well. Let's just get into it. So first I'm gonna start with this fern, which probably needs the most maintenance, honestly. It gets a lot of dead fronds. I think it needs repotted, but I'm gonna take that too. I'm just gonna rip off some of the dead fronds and clean up the area around it because it does produce a lot of, you can see like here, there's a lot of dead ones that will shed off. I'm pretty sure that's a fairly normal thing in a fern, but Maybe not this much, but it hasn't died. So, I mean, it's not like, it's not a bad thing, really. It's just a mess. So, I'm going to grab some scissors and work through this and cut it off and water it. Probably fertilize it. I'm fertilizing with miracle Grow fertilizer. Please don't shun me, okay? Because, like, I bought it before I, like, knew anything about fertilizer, really. And, like, miracle Grow. It's not like horrible by any means, but like there's better. I just didn't really know. So I'm gonna be using that um, for the, for all my plants. I'm probably gonna be fertilizing all of them today. Um, it's a liquid fertilizer that you just put in the water and I'm gonna do that. Pluck all the dead leaves and adjust them if they need to. I'm also gonna be inspecting them to make sure they don't have any pests. So then I don't have a huge outbreak problem, which I do recommend doing every single time that you water your plants. Or if you're not watering them like a ton, I guess you can probably check them uh, every few days just to make sure that you don't see any bugs wandering around on there. But I'm gonna show you the overview of this fern. It doesn't look too cute right now, but I'm gonna show you like a before and after, so. This is what she looks like right now. She doesn't look great. Uh, you can see those dead ones hanging down. It looks pretty leggy right now because it needs water. Whenever I give it water, it usually boosts up a lot more. But I mean, it's not dying. It grows out new. You can see here these little spirals that they grow out. I'm trying to get it to focus. Yeah, so they're still growing, still progressing, just like it sheds leaves when new leaves or fronds or whatever you want to call it come out. So yeah, I'm just going to clean this up, probably do like a time lapse of that and then show you guys the end because it does not, okay, you can see it doesn't look right right now, but we'll fix that and it's still going to be leggy until probably tomorrow or um, kind of wilted looking until tomorrow whenever it soaks up all that water and perks back up. But yeah. I'm sorry if me using scissors is offending you. <laughs> I don't really think it makes a difference to be honest. 
I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know. But I think cutting something off is cutting something off. I don't think pruning scissors is really necessary. As long as you clean your scissors, but that could just be me. But yeah, enjoy me clipping and fixing this guy for this time. I'm really getting the biggest project over with now because this one is such a pain to clean up sometimes. It needs to be hard, so it's really what I need to do, but I don't have a problem with it yet. Yeah, to really get this guy cleaned, I'm probably gonna have to repot it and like really get in there. But I'm just doing my best right now until I get a new pot at least. Cause it really does need repotted. I'm pretty sure it's fairly root bound, which isn't always a bad thing, but I don't think it likes it very much. Just wanted to add a little random clip in here, but amongst the death, there is life back there. You can see new, I don't know if they're called fronds or stems or whatever, but you can see new ones back in there forming. Yeah, it's very dead in there for me cutting it back again. I have to really get in there and like clean this out soon. That might honestly be able to be its own video because of how ridiculous this thing is, but yeah, I just thought that was kind of cool. So here's our fern looking a lot better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my watering can and I'm going to put it in water capture. I don't freaking know what they're called but I'm gonna put it, a plastic tray, yeah. I'm gonna put it in there and then the fern's gonna suck some of it up and then I'm also gonna put some in the top up here. And there is fertilizer in this water. You can see it start to suck it up. Isn't that neat? <laughs> so back here, I have my Tradescantia Nanook, I think that's how you say it, Tradescantia tricolor. Um, I'm just gonna give it some water. Come on, blinds. Um, I don't know if there's, like, if you should be watering it specifically from the bottom or top. I don't really look into that much, to be quite honest with you. If any of my plants, like, you see that there's a difference between bottom and top watering please do let me know this one's in like moss so i just give it a little bit of water every once in a while this is a <laughs> purple passion plant that's barely hanging on for dear life i'll show you it's literally just like a stem that i'm trying to get to come back to life but i don't know if it's going to be able to happen for me i'm just going to give that a little bit of water maybe the fertilizer will help <laughs> only a little bit though because it drains really well um, this is an African violet. Oh, by the way, this is a um, Sansevieria cylindric cylindrica, I believe. Um, yeah, these are African violets. This one's actually getting new blooms, but it really needs water. So, yeah, this one really needs water as well. Um, and then I have an Easter cactus over here that's literally freaking screaming for help right now. It needs water. And then there's a set of ogre ears over here. Um, I'm not sure of the scientific name for those, but yeah. Those are doing really well, actually. I never pay any attention to them at all. <laughs> Up here, I have a neon pothos. I'm actually not going to give this water because I just gave it water the other day. I'm probably not going to give any of these guys water because they got watered early because they were really needing it. 
This is a Brazil philodendron, a Mandula pothos, and a pearls and jade pothos, which is really popping off right now. Like it's grown so much since I moved it up there. And on my desk, I have this <laughs> Sansevieria uh, mother-in-law tongue. It came from the mother plant and it was way too big and I didn't have room for another one. So I literally just put it in this glass and put water in there and it's like been growing. So I'm just gonna keep it in there. Like, I don't really care if it like, cause I have a huge one. So if it dies, I'm like, um, that's okay, but it's doing good. So let's just keep it that way. And another desk plant of mine is the Domino Peace Lily. Um, it looks kind of crazy right now because I had to cut back the flowers because the flowers consistently come and die. It's very wilted over right now because, you know, these guys are dramatic. They love water. I give it water and it perks right back up like it's full, but it does take usually a day to see that full transition. So I'm just going to give it water with some fertilizer. I have another super sad piece of lily over here. It was one of the first ones I got and it hates me. I don't know why, but the other one does fine. This one just doesn't like me. But recently it has been growing new leaves, so that's kind of exciting. Maybe it's deciding that it actually wants to come around and like me. But I'm just going to give this some water. Peace lilies love water, so if you're someone who has like a heavy watering hand, definitely recommend these guys for you. I should also mention that my pets have plants in their cage. Yeah, you can hiss at me, whatever. But <laughs> we don't water those the same time because I usually water with fertilizer and I don't want to put fertilizer on their plants. But in there is a Schifflera. Those just get watered on days that they get their cages cleaned. And down here, we have another little chameleon and this is a variegated Schifflera. Now I'm just gonna give my Monstera some water that has been quarantined to my bathroom because of the thrift situation. I believe they're all gone though. If you watched my last video, or I think it was two videos ago now, you'll know that that was an issue and that I'm pretty sure I got rid of them. I'm not gonna move them <laughs> back to where it was because I don't want to risk the outbreak. So I'm just gonna pour some water in here, uh, let it drain out and soak that up. Give it a nice watering until the water comes out the bottom. Yep. Um, I try not to water my plants a ton, but whenever I do, I always make sure to give them like a good watering to the point where the water will go through the plant and out the bottom. Always. Here's that huge Sansevieria that I was talking about getting the baby plant from in my office. You can see there's another baby plant right here, like big, but we're just letting it do its thing. Um, so I don't water this one very much at all and it does great. <laughs> like you can see it's grown so much that it's tied. So what I'm gonna do is just give it a good watering to the point where the water flows down into the plastic tray down there. So now I have a few plants up here that are not doing the best. This is where my thrip <laughs> infestation was. So I'm just gonna bottom water these guys. I mean, they're not doing bad. They're getting new growth and everything, but uh, I'm just gonna bottom water these guys. No particular reason. Um, I have a, a plastic container down there ready for them filled with water. So I'm just gonna sit them in there and let them soak that up. By the way, I don't recommend that you bottom water succulents. The only reason I did that is because I had to go do something. I recommend just watering them and letting the water drain through all the way and have that be it. Don't let it sit in a thing of water and suck it up. Here we have a Dracaena, Dracaena, I don't really know how you say it, but I'm just gonna give this guy water. It was outside, it was looking really great until I put it outside and then it got like fried. So I've been trying to like rehab it in here. Now I have my aloe plant. Do not put them in the plastic containers. Like I said, in my aloe vera care guide. Also, sorry for the lighting, it's like, five in the afternoon so it's like peak sunlight coming through so i'm just gonna give this a good watering and then my raven zizi plants don't really need a ton of maintenance right now just need watered here i have my panda plant 
Again, just gonna give it some water. There were a couple pieces in here that fell off because they shed sometimes. And it's been growing some roots, so that's kinda cool. I've had this guy for three years. Massive. It was very small when I got it, like this big. I'm also gonna rotate that because it is really facing, like it looks like it's reaching for the sun. So I'm gonna turn it in hopes that it'll start to lean back in that way. That's why it's important to rotate the plants. Here I have a money tree, which also got wrecked when I put it outside. But it's doing a lot better, so I'm just gonna give this some water as well. It doesn't have a drain pot right now. Like I said, a lot of these need repotted or pots. I could probably do a full <laughs> video about that. That'd be kind of fun, honestly. So if that's something you'd like to see, let me know. Cause, make it happen. You'd be able to do like some questions or something too. That'd be kind of fun. Repot all my plants and answer some questions. So if you'd like to see that, let me know. <laughs> Next, we have this. What is this? Caladium. What kind of caladium is it? Marie Moore? I think that's how you say it. Caladium. Growing quite a bit, actually. See a new leaf coming out there. Those are always really cool to see. Um, that's from a fungus net problem I had. Keeping it in there to make sure that I don't get another issue with it, but it's been pretty good and maintained so far. But um, you can see the new leaf sprouting here, which is cool because it's always interesting to see the way that it grows out. Just gonna give that some water. This one got freaking wrecked too. I've been kind of just keeping it in here in hopes that the bulbs will re sprout. But this was a Ringland, I think that's what it is, Caladium. Um, they will die and then you can save the bulbs and they'll come back. So I'm kind of hoping that's what will happen. Um, I might dig the bulbs out of there, but I'm still going to give it some water just to see what happens. And if you're wondering what this is, this is a mosquito bit block <laughs> for the fungus gnats that I have an issue with. Still kind of have an issue with, not as bad. So. Those need removed, but I'm going to keep them in there for a little bit longer just to make sure. By the way, you can get fungus gnats from overwatering, or they can come in through um, other plants that you might buy, or in the soil that you're using. Well, be careful not to overwater your plants, and if you see yourself having an issue with that, I recommend buying mosquito bits, not in the circle ones like I have, but the actual mosquito bits, and putting them some water and watering your plants that way or putting them on top of the soil or I've heard that if you put sand on the soil that'll prevent them from burrowing in the soil and laying eggs and making more so some suggestions if you run into that issue here I have just a regular golden pothos just gonna give that some water now I'm gonna be watering my variegated rubber tree if anyone has any idea why it is getting brown around the edges, please let me know. Because I looked it up and it was saying that it could be from like overwatering. But like, I don't really ever water it, so I'm kind of confused about that. So if you know, let me know. But I'm just going to give it some water. Not a ton, though. Um, I also do have some orchids down there that I clipped the flowers back probably like a year ago and they never started growing back. I'm not sure if I was even supposed to do that, but I watched some girl's video about how to grow orchids and she said to clip it back. So I don't know if I'm just not doing it right, but they haven't died. So I don't know. I don't know if there's something I have to do or what, but they're alive. And then here I have a little tiny baby Shiflera, which I'm just going to give a little bit of water to. A Lithop, which I will not be giving water to because these guys do not need a lot of water. I learned it the hard way because I killed like three of them. So that was fun. Here is a Syngonium, just like a basic one, basic arrowhead. I'm going to give this some water. It's a wilted right now because it wants water. So I'm gonna do that and then it will perk back up. I've noticed that this guy really loves water. Like, 
I have to water it so much. So that's probably why it's welded because I haven't watered it in a while. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of embarrassed about some of these plants because like my channel is mainly about plants and they don't look the best right now. But you know, not everything can look great. <laughs> We can't be too hard on ourselves because we have lives. I try to take care of these as best as I can. I feel like I do a pretty good job. I don't know, just with like school and work and everything and then just like dealing with stress and all that, it's just difficult. So this is a goldfish plant that was really severely damaged whenever I bought it actually. And I didn't really realize that it was because it, maybe I can find one. Yeah, it had like a bunch of discoloration like this, and I thought it was variegated, but it's not. A couple of those leaves still have it. I'm not sure what that's from. It doesn't appear to have any bugs, but yeah, I'm just gonna give this a little bit of water. I'll hang on to a lot of the plants that are like not doing too hot to try to like save them or bring them back, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. Like for instance, this is like a completely dead creeping fig. This is like a twig, okay? But I'm still gonna water and see if I can like bring it back or something because these guys like water. And this is a sensitive plant of which has fallen apart down here, but it is regrowing and re-sprouting down here. These guys are really cool, but I don't want to touch it. Well, maybe I will. They close up whenever you touch them. They're pretty cool. Um, I don't want to stress it out too much because if you touch it too much, it'll stop doing that. I'm just going to give this guy some water too. I'm really happy that this one's coming back because I really like this plant and it's like died really fast it seemed like, but I'm really happy it's coming back. Up here I have a string of pearls of which I only water on its own. Um, to tell, I usually will squeeze one of the pearls and if it gives in a lot, it needs water. This one probably does, but I take it to the sink and do that, so. Yeah, this one hardly ever gets watered. If you have one of these guys and you see it's having like a hard time, don't give it too much water or else it will absolutely die. It has a grow light like directly on it, so it's getting technically full sun. Um, this is a variegated Peperomia obos. Obtusifolia? I think that's how you say it. I just got this one the other day. I'll give it a little bit of water. Then back there we have a string of hearts. I'm gonna wait to give that one water. Here we have a watermelon peperomia of which I just watered the other day, so I'm not watering that one. And back here we have a string of dolphins that's trying to boost off. And I'm also not gonna give that one water right now. And these guys, I'm also not giving water because these guys get water on their own terms. They'll wilt over whenever they need water. It does stress the plant out a little bit, so um, I try not to let them wilt completely over. And here we have a Renosa Crimson Princess. We could use some water. I'm gonna take this to the sink and water it. So you guys aren't gonna see that, but I'm gonna water it in the sink. And then these two I'm gonna also water off camera, but I'm not sure what this is. I'm not sure what any of my succulents are, honestly. I believe this is a child's necklace though. So now I'm outside and I'm just gonna water these succulents and this rattlesnake that looks horrific. I'm trying to get it to come back. here. Succulent that my mom gave me. This succulent, I have no idea what they're called. This Easter cactus, which is doing a lot better outside actually. Heartleaf philodendron. A little Echivera, I think. <laughs> a cactus. A Hawthornia Cuperii, I think that's how you pronounce it. Another ogre ear succulent. And a bear paw. Seeming to have some issues, but I think 
Putting it outside is helping. And I have like these despicable things over here. Let's not talk about that. So there are a few that I watered off camera just because seeing me water things continuously is probably not very entertaining, which is fine. Watered a couple Hoya and Ficus and Calatheas. Lastly, I'm going to show you guys how I water my air plants. So I keep my air plants in these small little containers here. They get good light for the most part. And whenever I water them, I just take them out and stick them in a bowl of water and let them sit there overnight. So here we have our bowl of water along with our air plants and an oil and coke can. <laughs> so basically I literally just like throw them in there, make sure they're fully submerged too. And I let them sit in there overnight. I'll come out here and toss them around a little bit just in case they're not getting fully um, covered. And usually whenever they dry, I do take off some of these layers. But to dry them, I'll take them out and just let them sit on a paper towel and release the water. And they'll get back to this silvery color, which is normal. Uh, whenever you put them in water, they turn pretty green, so. They're just getting hydrated, drying out, chilling, vibing in the sun, you know, you know the drill. I keep them in here overnight, take them out in the morning, let them dry, put them back. And I do this honestly once a month maybe, and they're doing perfectly fine, so. All right guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something or just had fun chilling with me while I was doing some plant maintenance, or maybe it inspired you to do some maintenance as well, which is always nice and always needed. If you'd like to see that video of me repotting my plants or just like changing the pots in general because I really need it, let me know because I would be happy to film it for you. It would really help me get all this stuff done and have some motivation to get it done. Leave a comment and let me know. That's all I have for you guys today, this video is probably a little bit too long. Subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you know whenever I upload. Like and a comment as well because that really really helps boost my videos. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.